Hey, Bruce. So hey. I wanted to ask. I watched the. Uh, I watched the, the first episode, and one of the things I noticed is that Ash is very different between when he's actually fighting and when he's just being Ash. Um, and I'm wondering if that. Where that kind of comes from, because it's just this, I noticed it as literally like a shift in personality. He goes from kind of bumbling, you know, lovable kind of thing to badass. And I'm wondering what that's about. It's about contrast. You know, I think with your characters, you got to do that. There's Mickey Mantle at the plate and Mickey Mantle out to, out to drink with the boys. Uh, I don't know. I, I I think it's kind of, I think with characters, I got a, heard a note from a, a director to an actor. This was related to me by a friend. And the director said, I want you to be a different character in every scene. And the, the actor was astounded. It was like, what, 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 what kind of, what are you, crazy? I'm only playing one character. His point was, there's so much depth to humans than each individual. But in order to even come close to the complexity, of being, even the most boring average person, that you'd have to play each scene as a completely different character to even start to see the glimpses of all the sides of a person or a character. So even though I'm doing a cheesy horror series, there is still some art to it. Our next question comes from the line of Mr. Tony Collado, storyline development. Hi, Bruce. Good to talk to you again. Um, it looks like for the pilot, which I thoroughly enjoyed, by the way, nice use of blood. Um, it, it seems like because they're kind of on to where he is, that this might be more of a road series a little bit, maybe around Michigan or maybe uh, beyond that, too. We can comment on that. Well, part of that depends on how the story evolves, obviously. Well, the first season, I think, is definitely, you know, putting the genie in the bottle. Um, after that, um, you got to see what roots and takes hold. So I think there might be information that Ash gleans that may take him in whatever direction he goes. So I don't know that it's necessarily going to be a road theory, but there's definitely a, being a slightly nomadic situation with the car, with the trailer. Yes, they're, they're able to roll, but they kind of have to roll. So, but they could easily, um, the route could change at any time. After the tone, please state your name and company, followed by the pound sign. Tyler Baker, private company. Thank you. The original, all three films, really. I was wondering how, how much work you guys did on, on, on getting back to that tone. Uh, we don't. What we do is we do what entertains us on the set. And that's really the bottom line. Um, the only tone meetings, I think, come after Sam leaves the directors and talking about it. But Sam and I never talk about tone. He's the one who's like, you know, if he puts his... Star, the, the, the star of his show is in a man girdle, the opening sequence of the show. I mean, and the guy's got tension. That takes balls for a director to, a writer director to create that, to do that with a character. So the funny thing is I, I challenge other directors. I'm like, I bet you can't be as daring as Sam as far as messing with the, the character and, and really showing their flaws, like naked flaws. We have a question coming from Judith Ringer, the line is open. Yes, hi, Bruce. Um, I was hi wondering with <laughs> the huge uh, variety of media and genres that you've worked with, um, I, from your responses, it, it seems that it's more of uh, where you can delve into, where you can expand your creativity and just, and just go. That seems to be what draws you. But is there a particular genre and or media that, that does draw you a little more or that you might be interested in working in further? Um, interesting question. Um, it's funny, the um, Ash vs. Evil Dead, yes, I go where the work is good. I, I had some people who represented me years ago who could not 
understand why I would go to Auckland, New Zealand, the, the Southern Hemisphere, to work on the show Hercules, and then on Xena, and then Jack of All Trades, to do these shows down there. They just they couldn't understand it. It was a syndicated show with no network. They got no respect at all, no Emmys, no nothing. And I'm like, you don't get it. You're not down there on the set with us. We can get away with murder, murder, and we do. We, we take the script and we look at it and we see what we can do. We work with the director, work with the other actors. If somebody has an idea, they do it. It is the most creative set I've ever been on. And last time I checked as actors, that's what you're looking for is creativity. You're not looking for the Rolls Royce and, you know, the big fancy trailer. Um, those are supposed to be the byproducts of having fun and then getting good at what you do. So, yeah, I'll chase that to the ends of the earth. But one of the main reasons when I knew we were going to go back to Auckland, New Zealand, for this show, I mean, I have crew members that I know down there that I've known for 20 years. So uh, these people are extremely gifted at what they do, and it, and, and it makes our job easy because they make it look good and we make it look easy. And it's only because now I work with people that I know. It just makes it so much better. You see them come out of their trailer, you're cracking jokes, you punch them in the arm. You know, you mess with them when they're on camera trying to get them to break up. You know, there's a lot of horseplay involved. And uh, that's a big appeal to it, too. But all other genres, all of those default to comedy. Horror is great. And the comedy is really, uh, and comedy can lift, lift your spirit. We have another question coming from Laura Gallagher. The line is now open. Hi again. Um, my question is about Lucy Lawless. What was it like um, being re reunited with her, and what has her presence added to this show? She's a badass, so she's a great addition to the show. Um, she can step in and do anything we need her to do, which is spectacular. She's a great actress with an incredible amount of versatility. She can do... Uh, comedy, which is great, and she can kick ass. So we're lucky, 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 lucky. So I think you can look forward to her having an increasingly expanding role in this show. And that's critical to me. Because I've always loved Lucy. Um, she was great when I worked with her on Xena, knowing that she was, you know, getting available. She wasn't available right away uh, during this first season. But so as soon as she was, I'm like, I, you know, her husband's Rob Tapper, my partner. I said, Rob, you better sit down with your wife for dinner. You better lock this in. So, yeah, it's important to uh, get her back. We're really happy, lucky. Our next question goes to the line of Rick Ashley Baker. The line is now open. Hello. How are you Hello. today? That's great. I like to hear that. So, I have a few questions, uh, I guess. But the the primary one is uh, me being from Michigan. Um, I'm I'm very excited to see uh, this this show play out the way that it has. Um, and well, I was wondering if if there's going to be any uh, if you will, you know, you, you talked about you know some Michigan uh, spoilers, if you will. Uh, if, if there's going to be any really great ones, like, you know, Flint or uh, Detroit. You well, know, the... I hope so. I, I hope the Michigan references will never end, because if you're setting your show at Michigan, we're definitely going to have that. You know, I want Ferndale in there. I want Royal Oak in there, where I was born. Awesome. But don't, you know, you're, you're going to see all kinds of those references in the show. I, I hold up my hand, you know, like the map, when I'm trying to talk to some guy about where something is. So... Yeah, it's all Michigan all the time. That's that's absolutely great. Hi, Bruce. I'm back again. Uh, have you ever had any uh, desire to write or direct an episode of the series? No, this is really Sam's baby. And I sort of stayed out of the burn notice territory as a director also, which, which just maintained a great relationship with the star, you know, because I didn't get in any kind of authoritative figure with him. I'm a fairly bossy director when I direct. I kind of want what I want. And um, now this works great. I have so much to do with Ash that uh, I don't really have any desire for that. We have a question from Chelsea Karate. Your line is now open. Hi, Bruce. Hope you're doing well today. Um, Sam Raimi explained at the Comic Con panel that other than his age, Ash hasn't really grown in the last 30 years. Uh, but do you think that during the course of this season, we'll see an evolution of his character? Yes, and thanks for asking that. Because, yeah, you have to. Look, Ash is going to be, you know, he's always sort of a pronounced character. 
show around him have to see something in him that makes them want to follow him on this quest. You know, they, they obviously, because of what's going to happen to them, they will have a personal stake in this as well. So, but yeah, Ash has to be a guy that you can actually sit down and reason with from time to time and, and try and convince them of something. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of decision making to be done. And he will have to involve other people against his will. Our next question comes from Nick Buck. The line is open. Bruce, how are you doing? Brand. <laughs> uh, I got the chance to watch the, the pilot episode, and holy shit, it was glorious. How do you think, yeah. how do you think the fans will react once it's released on Halloween, and was it complicated getting back into the mindset of Ash? No, it's not complicated to get back into the mindset of Ash. It's just difficult to get out of bed in the morning after you do a fight scene, because, you know, my recuperative powers are not as strong. Uh, what was the first part of your question? You can't hear me anymore, can you? Um, oh, what about fan reaction uh, to uh, coming out on Halloween? Well, you know, we did it for them, so I, I hope they like it. Um, it's got everything that they've always demanded, and this time it's, you know, maybe done a little class here. Our next question comes from Mr. Sean Mulvihill. I have open. Hey, Bruce, uh, congrats on the show. It it will win over fans because it won me over. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just wondering, I mean, are there already any talks about a season two? Because I just want more and more. Well, the only hints I would say are that um, every production has to prepare for that next season, meaning you have to extend the leases on warehouses and you have to get a writer's room going. So... There are things that are taking place that would indicate that, but there's been no official announcement. But we haven't been stopped from doing the necessary prep for another season. How's that going? Our next question comes from Derek Anderson, the line is open. Hi, Bruce. Uh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. I know you mentioned uh, that Ash, you know, he's no longer just by himself in a cabin. He has a pair of uh, friends and companions in uh, Ray and Dana's characters. I was just wondering what it's like to kind of share the blood splatter this time around with Dana and Ray. I like it. Now they, I only get a third of it. <laughs> yeah. Not, not a good plan. Yes, yeah, spread the love, man. Spread the blood around. And it was great to see them all being initiated. It's, a, it's always a wonderful experience. to see the, the true horror and shock on their faces when they feel that, that just you know, just nail him. Ray had some great, great reactions when he first got hit. He was like, you could tell his expression was, holy shit. You know, and it's great because it, it works perfectly for the scene. But I think when they first get hit with the blood, they don't, none of us have to act because we're all like, oh my God, too bad, too bad. You, you act just like you would. We have a question from Ash Hamilton. Your line is now open. Hey, Bruce, how you doing? Hi, Ash. You know, it's interesting that the Evil Dead franchise has evolved through the comics and through the games and the fan fiction, and that has definitely also evolved the character of Ash. Was there any of that discussed before going into the series that the expectations from fans might be a little bit different? No, I don't think the, the fans' expectations um, have changed from the basics. We will always give them the basics. Um, which is carnage, mayhem, some good one-liners, and an and unusual hero type. Uh, I think part of the attraction that fans will continue to like is that he's a good guy. He might be an idiot, but he's a good guy. And he's always going to try and do the right thing against ridiculous odds. Our question comes from Kyle Wilson. The line is now open. Hey, Bruce, nice to talk to you. Uh, I wanted to talk about the scale of the rest of season one, uh, because in the in Evil Dead, you guys are all trapped in the cabin. This time, you're out in sort of a free world, and it, it seems to be hinting at the Deadites are maybe going to be on a more global or at least national scale. Can you talk a little bit about uh, uh, the, the overall Deadite threat? Well, I don't think it's, it's uh, one of these situations where it's uh, like, was it World War Z, something like that. It's, uh, no, I think this 
is more, uh, this is local, regional, at least for right now. But it's definitely spreading. And it's definitely coming from one area. It's definitely coming from where near Ash was. <laughs> you have a question for the line of certificate wire. The line is open. Hi, Bruce. We get to talk to you again. Indeed. Um, so the first episode captured that great balance of horror and comedy from the films. And I was wondering um, if you're going to, to keep with that balance or if we're going to see episodes that are more horror-centric and more serious or ones that are more completely slapsticky, or is the balance going to be maintained? I think we're going to keep a pretty good balance. It's a horror show where we do take the horror seriously. So a, a fan of only horror, I don't feel will be insulted by our approach of horror. We take it very seriously, and hopefully we'll give them some good stuff to speak out about. Uh, the comedy for me is what lets everybody know with a wink that, you know, this is ultimately entertainment. entertainment. And um, for me, it takes the creepiness out a little bit because uh, it's so over the top. Uh, that it becomes nothing that you can see on the 6 o'clock news. That, that's what has always appealed to me about this approach. We have a question from Adam Moreau. Your line is open. Hi, Bruce. Thanks for taking the time today. You bet. Uh, over the years, I imagine you've probably been approached by any number of studios or writers with all kinds of ideas for Ash and the Evil Dead. You know, for years there was the... Uh, Ash versus Freddy versus Jason rumor floating around. Um, can you talk about maybe a few of the things, uh, some of the more crazy ideas that people pitched you about the Evil Dead that uh, you're probably much happier to have done this TV show instead of? Oh, yeah. I mean, this TV show, look, the good news here is none of us are tormented about doing some bastardized version of the show. This is the, uh, of the movie. This is going to be as true to form as possible with the current demand. It's just the whole approach. Um, what the hell? First part of your question, though. Um, can we patch him back in for a second? One moment, sir. Mr. Moreau, your line is open again. Hey, I'm back. Yeah, just clar clarify your first part there. Yeah, my, my question was, I know you've probably seen, you know, we've gotten video games and comic books, and I imagine, yeah. can you talk a little bit about the crazier Evil Dead ideas you've been pitched over well, the years? Well, mostly the one, the one was the conversation with New Line about doing Ash versus Jason versus Freddy. And I was interested because I wanted to kill them both. And so, uh, but we were informed that uh, no one's killing anybody. And no one would, we, you would only, we would only have control over what happens to the Ash character. We couldn't control the story, couldn't control what Ash does to anybody else. And I'm like, this sounds really not creative. So I'm so glad we're back to this again, that now we can probably do it right. <clears throat> we have a question from the line of Mr. Rob Delero. Your line is open. Hey, good to talk to you again, Bruce. Um, my, my question was, uh, in the Army of Darkness uncut version, you've got a love scene where it's very passionate and there's silk sheets and all this stuff. And then Ash, uh, you know, gives a woman a piece of Ash uh, in the bathroom. How awkward, how awkward was that scene to do for you at, at all, if there was any, any uh, awkwardness? How what? Awkward? Oh, sex scenes are always awkward. You know, I don't, I don't dig them. But if they can work to either comedic or story effect, in this case, we used it to trigger a story a story point, so I didn't have a problem with it because it wasn't, some, it wasn't completely random. It was actually leading up to something. We have a question from John Espino. Your line is now open. Hey, Bruce. So your yeah. Ash character is basically the cause and solution of all of his problems. What do you think makes him so prolific to audiences? Because he's just like you. We make our own problems all the time. Everything we complain about is something that we can solve. So that's why I think Ash is universal. Because it's, like it's like looking into the mirror. We have John Wamsley. The light is open. 
Hi, Bruce. Thanks a lot for taking the time for us today. Bet. Um, I was wondering, uh, first of all, the, the pilot was just amazing. Um, what I really noticed was in that scene with the doll was very much like almost akin to the scene with your hand from Evil Dead 2. Um, I was wondering how it was acting with, you know, something that was going to be CG rather than, you know, in Evil Dead 2, you actually had a hand messing around. You were holding it and hitting it and all that kind of stuff because it was, you know, your hand. What was the difference there? Well, everything. You have, you have a physical thing in one case and something ethereal in another case. Um, it's all acting, so it doesn't really matter whether you're fighting with your actual hand or a fake hand. It's all fake. So the level of fakery doesn't go up or down. Uh, it's all fake. Like, where does the music come from? Whenever I have someone ask me about logic questions, I go, where does the music come from in movies? There's never any answer. We have a question from Laura Bengrove. Your line is now open. Hi, Bruce. How are you? I'm A-OK. <laughs> this is a real honor to talk to you. Just want to let you know, this is Evil Dead is also, like, my dream come true. Just that whole film is perfect. So. Now, um, who dragged you into it, though? <laughs> well, actually, my whole family is a huge Evil Dead family. It's kind of been passed down through all of us, so oh, it's a okay. real staple in my family. <laughs> um, okay. Well, give, give them all my fondest regards. No, I shall. <laughs> Um, so I wanted to talk about one of my favorite things in some of uh, Sam's other films is the cameos that you do. Um, they're usually funniest parts of the film to me. Um, and I'm just wondering, they, you know, Sam has done cameos in Evil Dead, and I'm wondering if we can expect any cameos from him at all throughout the season. Oh, cameos from Sam? Oh, my God. No, I don't think so. Uh, Sam's more like Howard Hughes these days. He, 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 Sam and Dodds are great and powerful, you know. Hiding behind the curtain. I, I think he wants to just work his magic uh, back in a mysterious way. We have a question from Carisha Pazika. The line is now open. Hi again. Okay, Howdy. So and then, by the way, for all journalists who can hear, if you've spoken with me before, don't feel obliged to any courtesies. You can just fire up your next question. Okay, firing it up. I really like the supporting cast. Um, I was wondering yeah, how good. they were going to do good. against you. And the chemistry with you and Ray Santiago is really great. And I'm wondering how long it took to find him and what it's like working together, the two of you, because it's, you two are wonderful on screen. Well, you never know. You never know until you audition. So, is, so you know, as a fellow executive producer, I pick my battles of what I get involved in. And one of them is casting, because I know I'm going to be stuck on a set with those people. So, you know, we went through a lot of vigorous stuff. We had to make sure these people were healthy and rigorous and had a lot of patience and could deal with uh, a lot of special effects, um, a lot of just difficult, uncomfortable filmmaking. And so Ray, I think we got a fortune with. He's got a spectacular way about him. He's got a great, he's got a great mug. And a sweet guy. And so I think uh, I hope, my hope is to go to conventions and and with those guys and to watch them get swamped. I, that would be a greatest joy of mine is to watch Dana and Ray and Joe Marie Jones go to these conventions and, and be tormented by fans. <laughs> it would make me very happy. We have a question for the line of Mitchell Long. Your line is now open. Hey, Bruce. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us uh, today. A huge honor. No worries. Uh, I'm really glad you mentioned working as an executive producer on Ash vs. Evil Dead. I'm curious, what are some of the challenges as well as benefits of assuming multiple roles in a project? Well, the challenges are it just takes up more of your life. But the benefits are that you can control more of what your output is and try and make it something that you're happy about. And uh, sometimes it's just an act you you they, you don't really have that input. I, I had a good position on burn notice in that I knew they never really had to ever listen to me. 
So when I made suggestions, they were all happy, they were very friendly, you know, and I sent them to the executive producer knowing that I didn't expect anything. These, these are just suggestions. And in this case, it's a little more, it goes beyond suggestions. You know, it's more like, let's do this. Let's do that. But I have two great partners, Rob Chapman and Sam Raimi. And we never really hit an impasse because we've got three people. If, if everyone, anyone ever wants to have a partnership, go in with three people. You'll never hit an impasse. We have a question from the line of Mr. Kurt Anthony Krug. The line is open. Hello, Mr. Campbell. How are you, sir? I'm fine and dandy. Good to know. Good to know. Um, wanted to ask, the show is only a half-hour show. Why isn't it an hour-long drama? Curious. An hour-long show. Because then it would be boring. Oh, okay. And not what, and not what we wanted. and not a comedy. A half-hour is the only format that gives us the pace that we need and the tone that we need. And I think it's perfect for a modern audience. I don't know that we need a ponderous ash. We need a quick-witted, fast-moving ash. We have a question from Dana Abercrombie. Your line is now open. Yes, hi, thank you. I was wondering, you've been with Ash on and off for several years now. What personally would you like to change about his character on the series from which we've seen in the movie? Because we grow and evolve and change. Well, I want to get to a serial about it, so there's not a whole lot I want to change. He just has to become more of a leader and more of a guy that's going to, you know, uh, inspire people. And, um, you know, he's, he's going to be like a teacher, educator, kind of mentor, poor mentor. So there would be a little more of that. You know, Ash is kind of an Ash figure to, uh, you know, the, some of the characters in, in, in the film between Dana and Ray. You know, you're going to have a little bit of that, like an uncle, uncle father type. So that's what I'm looking forward to. We have a question from Christopher Chang. The line is now open. Uh, what has some of the fan reaction been like since you've been promoting Ash vs. Evil Dead? They're like, it's about time. I mean, it really is. Uh, they're not angry, but they're like, okay, finally. I think they're very, they're very resolved. They're like, okay. I think they feel like they've won. They, their years of tormenting us have finally paid off. And I think they're actually satisfied that it's as close to the real thing as you're going to get uh, of putting the original elements back together again. We have one for the line of Christopher Jimenez. The line is now open. Okay. Um, I was also wondering, you, as the show starts off, you're in a trailer, um, just as you were in My Name is Bruce. So what's the deal with the trailer? Well, that's your own parallel. That, that, they really don't have anything to do with it. One is a meta movie, and one is just Ash. You know, look, trailers are, trailers typify, at least in people's minds, you know, a low-budget situation. And that was the goal there. So I wouldn't draw too much into it. We have a question for the line of Mark Rivera. Your line is now open. Thank you so much. Uh, Bruce. I was surprised to see that Ash still had the Nepanomicon in his possession after all he's been through. Will we find out why he had it? Did he have a choice and uh, in a flashback or something? And also, is this season self-contained in case there's not a second season? Well, every show that's designed as a TV show has to be designed for multiple seasons. Um, It'll feel contained. I think he'll feel very satisfied by the end of the season. But there's no question about it. It's designed for more. Um, and as far as the Necronomicon, uh, I wouldn't get too much into why Ash did or didn't have the book. I think um, I think it's an Ash thing to do to not do anything. Just tuck it away. He tried to burn it. It didn't work anyway. We have a question from Derek Anderson. Your line is now open. Last Christmas Evil Dead has the perfect premiere of Halloween, and I was just wondering, are there any favorite horror movies that you like to watch around this time of year? 
I like the original Exorcist, the very first one, done by Wayne Friedkin. It's just so well done, such a professionally made movie that it's really, really disturbing. And Linda Blair is just off the charts great. We have one from Salim and LaRocco. Your line is open. Um, after completing the first film, and, you know, well, after completing the first film, did you guys expect it to get this big? And the second part of that question is, why now instead of, like, probably like 10 years ago that you decided to produce the show? Well, no one can ever expect anything to happen. The film industry, the entertainment industry, it's always, you never know what's going to happen next. So, no, nobody had any idea. We didn't think we were going to finish the stupid movie. It took well, at least three years to finish the movie. So, uh, second part. What the hell is the second part? Let's go back. Patch me in. Don't ask two-part questions, reporters, because I'm going to forget the second part. But just ask a single question. It'll be a lot easier on all of us. Your line is back open, Mr. Loroco. On the second part, um, part was, why not, say, 10 years ago, pick this to show? Well, why because I think TV is finally caught up to what? Uh, TV until you had these premium services where they were not worried about content. Um, our show wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't work as a TV show. This show would not work on cable, and this show would totally not work on broadcast. The only way it works is under these circumstances, which are now. So I think, and plus we realized economically making a $200 million feature was not the answer here. We want to, if we want to entertain people continuously with Ash, it's got to be in the form of a TV show. We have a question from Tony Tolado. The line is now open. Yeah, Bruce, uh, speaking of the Necronomicon, it just seems like with the show, you have the opportunity to expand upon the mythology of it and to kind of expand what kind of creatures Ash will face. Is that going to happen in season one? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's not like we're going to have a creature of the week, but Ash is going to meet many new demons and entities and forces that he had not encountered before. That's the cool thing of doing a, a weekly TV show. You can hit him with a bunch of demons. We have a question from Chelsea Perotti. The line is now open. Hi, Bruce. Um, first, hey. do, you think, do you think that Ash has ever used the chainsaw for yard work? And what do you think the recipe is for the perfect Evil Dead episode? Well, the recipe is the right mix. It's like it's like baking a cake. You know, if you, if you use baking powder instead of baking soda, it's a disaster. So in our case, if uh, if our horror gets a little too dark, we can leaven it with a little humor, and if it gets too loopy, we can hit it with some horror, you know. Uh, but I think uh, pace and a sense of fun is also really important, too. We have a question from Tony Sims. Your line is now open. Hey, Bruce. Um if you could expand on another character that you've played, who would that be? Would you expand a Briscoe, a Ace, Boomer, Santa? What what would that be? I would expand Briscoe for sure, because you know every actor wants to do wants to be a cowboy. And uh, you know that was a great year. It was one pretty much solid year of, of being a cowboy and promoting and doing all that stuff. And if I never did it again, I'd be okay with it because it was a very fulfilling year, very hard working year, uh, but I wouldn't mind going back to that, because that was a good character. It was a really fun character. It was, like, it was probably the closest to an actual good guy, like a real heroic type, who hopefully, you know, was smart enough to be interesting. We have a question from Ash Hamilton. Your line is now open. Let's go home. Yeah, you know, looking at the first episode, uh, we see Ash go trolling for some last call ass and just happens to uh, grab a couple of Magnum condoms. Was that your personal contribution to the beginning of that episode? No, mine was that he was going to take two condoms. He goes, to, he goes to take one condom, he thinks about it, and he goes, no, I think I might need two. Might be a two condom night. The Magnum just is what it is. 
We have a question from Laura Gallagher. Your line is now open. Hi. Um, are you like Ash in any way? Oh, dear God. Look, every actor's going to have a little something of that in any character they play. Any actor who says they crawl inside their role and disappear, they're not telling the truth. Um, I think what you do is with a character, you take the worst sides of yourself and you amplify them, or you take the best sides of yourself and you amplify them, or you kind of mix it all around. But yeah, there's going to be a little bit of Ash in me and a little bit of me and him. No way to get around it. We'll be taking our last question from Mr. Travis Dale. Bruce, uh, it raises the stakes when there uh, is something for the hero to lose. Is Ash going to have a significant love interest in the series, or is he just satisfied having two times kind of sex with the strain? Um, well, you're going to have to see uh, Ash considers himself an aging Lothario. So you're going to, he's not giving up on that. So you're going to see a little bit of that. You're going to see a little something-something from the old man. <laughs> I think that might be it. That was our last question. I will now turn it back to Danielle Dusky. Thanks, everybody, for joining the call. Um, as I said in the beginning, we will be sending around a transcript uh, once we receive after the call today. And this is the conclusion of our conference call with Bruce Campbell. Thanks so much. And thank you very much, all you fine journalists, for your time and attention. We appreciate it. We need your support. Uh, some of you are fans. Some of you don't know anything about this uh, series or Hopefully you can find out and enjoy it. But this is uh, this is for the fans. This one is for the fans. Thank you. And that concludes today's conference call. Thank you very much for your participation. You may all now disconnect.